mm. for the next couple of weeks. 2019, as we know, is it was a historic year in terms of arrivals, nearly 10,000 or so. Mm. What are the what, what, what are the indicators saying about this, the coming weeks? Yeah. Week up to Monday? yeah. I mean, we, the numbers have already started. I can see it from the da daily arrivals. Um, last year, we had about 10,900 8, 9, individuals who stated that they came for Carnival. Um, we expect them to do just as well, maybe even better than last year. Um, we, like you said, it's a big week when the private feds took takes over. Although on the weekend we had a couple of big ones already, but those had been there historically. Um, and it's going to be a really, really um, epic carnival season. If, from what I've been told, our, you know, reaching out to the different promoters, you know, most of the parties are sold out already. You know, the boat rides are sold out. Um, there are issues of capacity. People tell you they cannot even get infrastructure, stage and tents because they're not enough um, to meet the needs right now. So that tells you a lot of effort um, is being put in by the private promoters. Um, we start off tomorrow night with Ricky T and Friends, the first big show of the season. Um, the parties from Just for Fun and Fusion and Let everybody, you know, will be joining in and it ends on the weekend. We have, you know, Euphoria, Color Me Red, Family, whatnot. Um, a lot of people come in for that. They come in for the I mean, they, they put that. We have less seats, but our arrivals are up on last year. I mean, last year we, at year to date, to me, we are doing better than last year. Well, June figures are not out yet. June just ended. Year to date, with less seats. And, I'm, I, and when I look at the numbers, I also look at the load factor. The, the airlines are coming in 95% feel. Air Canada was 100%, you know, American 100%. They are coming in feel. So we have less seats, but our numbers are still up. Um, of course, we want more seats, because if you have more seats, you can promote even harder, you can drive it harder and still and get more people. Um, but, I mean, we, our numbers are still above last year. Um, we ninety five percent of where we were in twenty nineteen, um, which tells you that we almost completely back to the best. Yeah. Um, so I mean, they, they have those detractors. Personally, I would love more flights. I'd love more seats, because just the more seats you have, you know, the more options people have, the more some people will come. And even in all of that, the FA has never been so high. I mean, the FAs are high. I mean. If you just go and check how much is a ticket from Trinidad, well, you won't get one right now, but the, the cost of a ticket from New York, from Miami, from um, Port of Spain is very high right now. I think it would discourage, but they're still coming. <laughs> they're still coming. They're still coming. What do you attribute that to? Is it St. Lucia's brand or the kind of product? Well, I mean, it, it, it is more than just St. Lucia. It's Caribbean. It's global. People want to travel. It's almost as if they've had a psychological hangover from COVID, that people are prepared, having not gone through the experience of COVID, that they, they want to travel and enjoy themselves. People are not just living their life, their lives the way they did before. People are traveling and they want to travel. So the high FA is not just St. Lucia. Declining a few of it's not just St. Lucia throughout the region. And you know everybody's having good numbers as well. People are traveling. St. Lucia, maybe a little more so because, you know, we're one of the premier destinations. So, you know, there is a huge demand um, for St. Lucia. So we are benefiting from that. But people are traveling and, and you know, we've seen it throughout the Caribbean. As Minister for Creative Industries, to your mind, the orange economy, the St. Lucian participants in the orange economy, this time of year is a time when they're all smiling. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the best times for them. But, I mean, that has been going on for months, huh? Yes. I mean, this is not just for Carnival. We moved from jazz, which was another, you know, fantastic period for the creatives and everybody associated from hairdressers, you know, um, 
persons, cosmetologists, the small vendors, the seamstresses. That has been going on. And once jazz ended, we tried to start some of the community carnivals, and we're now into um, carnival. And I think this week on Wednesday, we'll be launching Emancipation Month. Yeah, I think this week we'll be doing so. Um, so we're going straight into emancipation. And of course, August 1st, which is Emancipation Day, we'll have the big present, freedom presentation, um, of course, which will be announced later on this week, like I said. Um, so again, the creatives, the dancers, the musicians, you know, the same stresses, they, everybody will be back at it again in August. And of course, once August finish, we'll be launching Creole Heritage Month which we hope to be even bigger than last year. So again, the creatives, you know, um, will be at it. And, and it's important we do that uh, because if you're going to create an orange economy, it has to be a series of activities that people can engage in and create interconnecting economic activity. Uh, and that's what we want to do. We want to make a full-fledged subsector and economy out of the creatives. And you can't do it by having two events a year. I mean, you wouldn't go full-time with only two events a year you have. You go full-time if you know, you know, just like you export bananas every week, you know, you can be part of that. You go fishing every day, um, you know. So that's what we, we intend to do, create an, eco an economy for creatives where they basically just have continuous economic activity, creating livelihoods for them, you know, jobs. And that, that's what it's all about. Some observers have indicated the recent crisis